How are we there, guys? And welcome to another episode of the Smashing Crossbar Podcast. I'm your host, Josh, once again joined by Ben. How are you, buddy? I'm good, mate. How are you? Oh, mate, as good as can be, sitting in friggin' Mexico with a, you know, lockdown in place. (laughs) (laughs) As long as they don't shut the bloody bottle, those will be right. Oh. Bloody hell, I tell you. Um, hope everyone's traveling well. Hope everyone's doing well who isn't in Mexico. Hope you all, all the lucky people in New South Wales and Newcastle are enjoying the sunshine. And they'll be next. All, all, all the all the luxuries of being going, being able to go to a restaurant and etc. Lucky bastards. But anyway, <laughs> um, before we get into it, obviously, big shout out to Gabriel Ma Optometrist at Jesmond, major sponsors of the show. Big shout out to those guys. Muchly appreciated. Big shout out to Pete, obviously the winner. Oh, what did um, I just tell Mako you? Sunglasses. Um, we'll talk. We'll, Ben's apparently working on shit in the background, so we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, be sure to go see those guys if you guys have got any eye care needs or problems. Those guys will sort you out. Anyway, we're going to get into it. Obviously, big thanks to Casey Women for joining us all the way from the other side of the world. Who believe it or not, seems to have better internet than anyone in Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys are going to, you're in for a treat here. You can actually hear him clearly. Um, mate, how are you? Pleasure to be here, uh, Josh and Ben. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're the technology capital of the world over here. We don't miss out on anything. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you, pay, you pay little for your internet, but you get as much as you want. So, enjoy yourself. Bloody beautiful. <laughs> Friggin' um, I think we're getting robbed over here. That's for friggin' <laughs> Oh, we sure as hell are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bloody Lockie, how are you, mate, in the chat? So, yeah, everyone in the chat. Obviously, if you guys have got any questions through the show, obviously, for Casey, um, feel free, jot them in there. Ben or myself will pick them out and obviously ask him. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Oh, Newcastle Jets news fan base. Not happy about the home game against Wellington being moved. Oh, I saw to that today. Oh, no. <laughs> He's have to travel two hours. At least he can still travel. <laughs> yeah, at least I can leave the house. Bloody hell, that's a lot of whinging for someone who can still go to the game. <laughs> How are you anyway, no. mate? That's um. Thanks for jumping on Newcastle Jets news fan page. But Casey, it is absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. We are grateful, and um, obviously talk a little bit about your career, a bit of time in Norway, which is still obviously current. Um. At this point of time, but yeah, no, we'll start off with let's go back to the beginning, mate. Ninety five thereabouts, Brisbane Strikers. How yeah, that all, was a. How did it all? That was in? a. That was the start of it. I was lucky to have um, uh, Bruce Stahl, uh, who's a who's a who's a real name up in uh, Queensland for many years, and and still is a. Uh, among the what can I say the older generation. So mm-hmm. he was one that brought me through with uh, with Frank Farina. And uh, it all kicked off there with the strikers, and I had uh, lots of experience to to look around with uh, Alan Hunter, Gary Phillips, Danny Wright, Rod Brown, Frank Farina. So you know the names um, the names go on and on. So um, you know it was a good grounding for me. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, no better. Obviously, you know, Frank Farina. Obviously, he's a you know, he's well well known in Australian football. Obviously, former uh, soccer is manager and, and so forth. Bloody. Um, how did how did life obviously treat you at a young age? Um, it, it, how did football come about? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, it was that kind of generation. I mean, I grew up in Northwest Queensland, so um, you know, uh, a small town where I grew up, Mount Isa and Cloncurry. I'm from Cloncurry originally, born in Cloncurry, and um, you know, there there's there's uh, there's two there's two there's two what football teams and two league teams, and you play each other every other weekend. So, you know, you play the semi-final and the grand final against each other um, constantly. So um, there wasn't much in the way of numbers, but there was definitely um, competitiveness uh, out those ways. And, um, you know, sports are uh, something that you can you can jump onto and um, can be a pathway, you know, into different areas and whatnot as well. But uh, I grew up with a big family, four brothers and three sisters, and sport was always a part of, you know, our daily lives and still is to this day. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, it's taken me around the world, and uh, I started from there. We moved to Brisbane when I was young, kept making all the all the uh, state league teams and whatnot until um, until I got a call through the QAS, the, the the youth system that they had up there, the Queensland Academy of Sport, and then I went on to you know Brisbane, the Brisbane Strikers, and 
later on to, to, to Perth and abroad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so roughly, roughly 49 games over the period, scored a few goals. Um, you then, as you said, you then moved to, moved to Perth. How, how did that come about? Was that um, sort of planned or there was a sporadic? Yeah, no, I'd had, um, I'd had a couple of seasons in Brisbane. We were lucky enough to win the league in 96-97 uh, in Brisbane. And I stayed on a further two seasons after that. I had, a, I had an injury with an ankle, so I had to get that right. Uh, probably never really got totally healed, but um, uh, you do what you do. And um, not long after that, yeah, I had a call from, I can't remember who the actual person was from Perth, but uh, Bert Stenger was the coach at the time with uh, Mitch Davray. And um, they got me over to Perth. So um, uh, I think it's Nick Tanner used to own the, used to own the club at the time. Um, yeah. Probably still goes and watches games to this very day. So um, they are the ones that got me there. Great club, still is a great club. Um, fond memories of it. Um, uh, still hurts today that we lost to uh, Wollongong Wolves in the 2000, uh, 2000 final yep. uh, after leading 3-0 at halftime. So those sores never leave you. But uh, Wollongong proved that they were, uh, they were a great team and they won it the, the year after as well. So... Um, mm. Hats off to them, even though it still stings. But um, it was a it was a great it was a great time. I moved away from home, and um, that really gave me a, a good uh, grounding for when I moved abroad as well. So um, you know, couldn't can't thank my time enough. Uh, my grounding with the Brisbane Strikers and all the experience I had there, and then obviously going to Perth and uh, got to play along great players there. And one of your mates from uh, Newcastle, Troy Halpin, was there. Scotty Halpin was there before that. Um, Petkovic was there, the goalkeeper, uh, Jace and uh, Gareth Nathan, who was a you know just a you know one of the best, one of the greatest leaders I had during my whole career. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, um, you know, I was very lucky. Uh, Scott Miller there at left back, uh, Bobby Despotoski. I was just online the other day saying happy birthday, birthday to him. Yesterday it was his birthday on the glory site. So, I I, I follow these things and uh, all the clubs that I've been at. I always keep yeah. an eye on them. They're close to my heart and. Um, uh, even though I wasn't there for too long, I was there for two seasons, which in some careers is a long time. Um, yeah. I still have fond memories and uh, I still have, uh, you know, um, always connections with those clubs. Let's be honest, obviously, I was a young kid at that age and Perth were dominant. They were, they were very good back in those days. Bobby Despotoski was just out of this world well, as a young kid. They had a, they had a wave of uh, support as well and uh, yeah. you know, the, the Glory fans are one of the most, if not the most passionate in the league uh, back then and, and today as well, where yeah. there was, we, were, we were coming up in front of 17,500, 18,000 people every week just constantly at, at the home games and the atmosphere was just electric and uh, you know, had the old shed there and I know they've still got glimmers yeah. of the shed, shed there as well. Um, so it was brilliant. You really had contact with the fans. That, that ground there is nice and tight as well. So, um, you know, it, it allowed for a, a real... Um, community vibe whenever we played there and it was a it was a real event each uh, each uh, saturday or sunday or on a weekend so um you know um the fans there have really driven the club forward and um you know they're the they're the past and the, and the future of the club as well yeah absolutely um well come at a pretty impressive time obviously 99 2001 smack bang in the middle of that 2000 the australia hosted the olympics and you were lucky enough to be part of that uh the 23s i believe at the time Yes. Uh, um, yes. What was what was that like? I could couldn't imagine how. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't say lucky because that's like you're tossing the coin or something, and I just got picked. But no, yeah, bit, yeah. there's a bit of hard work involved in it there, Joshy. <laughs> oh, no, bloody <laughs> Don't tell him short. <laughs> no. Nah, uh, nah, that's there's, what I do. There's, nah, there's plenty of there's plenty of blokes that work just as hard as what I did. That you know, unfortunately, didn't didn't make the cut at the end of the day as well. And uh, there, there's some uh, there's some stories there that uh, you, you don't want to tell. But um, like I said, we you know we. We, we underperformed at that Olympic Games and uh, I was only talking about it to someone else the other day that, you know, it's still a disappointment um, in my career and uh, it was a disappointment for everyone. You know, Raul Blanco was a coach at the time and I've still got fond memories of Raul and um, I really enjoyed his coaching and the way he did things. We were just, we were not unlucky, but at that time we had a lot of players within Europe as well. Uh, we had three, we could have three uh, overage players come in. So we had Laza, uh, Vadukes and Skoko come in who, who all did a fantastic job. Uh, yeah. They're, you know, Premier League player quality players. You know what I mean? World, world beaters at the time. So, um, but but the connection with the whole team wasn't really there. You know, we had Hayden Fox was away a fair bit as well, and he was, you know, a, a great leader for for what we had. Um, 
we had home based players like me, uh, myself, and uh, Shime Klosimo. Um, uh, Bresh was there at the time as well. Jason Cleaner was uh, back and forth as well. He was already starting his career in Europe. So yeah. there was a there was definitely a disconnect between uh, us not being together and gelling a lot all the time. So. You know, after losing the first game to, to, to Italy in the 85th minute or something like that, we lost to um, uh, Prillo scoring a goal late in the game. Then it sort of cascaded from there and we, we conceded late goals in, in all three of our games. And when you lose the first one, it really puts you on the back foot and you have to get a result in the second one. Correct. We clawed our way back to 2-2 and um, they end up, uh, you know, uh, again, we, 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 we made an error and um, they capitalised. And by the time the Olympics started, we were kind of already packing our bags so um, luckily football f- football's you know football's all, all year round and we were yep. I think we were off again in two weeks to Saudi Arabia playing uh, playing against the Saudis in, in some kind of tournament so it was quickly washed away but uh, the memories of that disappointment uh, they're definitely still um, still there yeah oh <laughs> lucky we're gonna get to that one lock we'll get there when we get to the Jets well we're not, as I said, we're not going to sell him short. Um, we, won't, we won't go too too long into it. We could be here for a freaking hour and a half, two hours. Because um, he got around all good. Between, once he left Perth, obviously. Um, playing at Moss, uh, Lillestrom, uh, and what have we got there? Frederick, Frederick Stud. And obviously, yep. a loan spell at Lynn. 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 Dead right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joshy, Joshy boy, you're Norwegian. It's on point. His pronunciation is <laughs> yeah, perfect there. Yeah. His choice. Yeah. Yeah. What. The, port, the Portuguese is coming out of me there, the European. I didn't <laughs> realise they went to year 12 at Newcastle, but well done. Good stuff. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Wait, <laughs> where's the applause? <laughs> where's the applause there? Oh, there we go. Bloody hell, no wonder he couldn't wait to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for the escape button. He was looking at it. <laughs> Holy cow. That's, That's nothing brutal. against the other people of Newcastle, but maybe no, just against some of the players. No, maybe against some of the, play- <laughs> some of the players that I met at Newy. You know? Maybe they weren't the brightest of kids that I've ever seen. But anyway, <laughs> I won't oh, name anyone Ben Kenneroff. Oh, oh, <laughs> and he's around our age too. <laughs> I, was, I played, I played you, against Ben Kenneroff. You, you, know, you know I love you, Benny. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, new father as well, by the way. I, I saw Is he? Is one. he? Okay, okay. okay. Big, big congrats. To well, you. congrats, Benny. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, school wasn't the best, but he learned maths a little uh, bit. Very good pronunciation. Fish. Very good. Well, he learned geography, um, didn't he? Bayern Munich. He knows Bayern Munich's in Germany. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. Uh, he, he, he knew where he thought he was going. Yeah. <laughs> Poor bugger. Um, but, yeah, obviously, he played, played around a bit. How did... How did it all start getting overseas? Yeah, I, I had a I had an English agent, and he it was difficult for me. I couldn't get into England because you had to have so many caps for the national team, and I don't have a, an English passport or a European passport at all. So uh, he knew a Norwegian agent who got me on trial at a club at Moss, um, and I uh, went there for two or three days. And uh, the gaffer there said, "Yeah, we'd love to have him." So I spent uh, I spent the rest of that season with them. Yep. And then um, I played the next season as well. Unfortunately, we were relegated in the second season I was there and I was sold then to, to Lillestrom. So I stayed there for four and a half years before I was sold on as well. And I was, you know, I had a, some really good coaches there. Uwe Roschler, who just went down right this couple of weeks ago with Fortuna Düsseldorf, yep. um, who played for Man City. Um, uh, he was my coach there for two years. Gunnar Hutt. Gunnar Huller was his assistant who played uh, for many teams, Leeds United in, the, in England and whatnot. So he had a yep. really big career as well. So I did that until I, I was there for four and a half years, until 2006. Um, uh, Shane Stefanuto was there with me as well. Um, oh. Was there any other Aussies? Oh, Clayton Zane Clacker was there before I was there in, uh, 2000, in 2000, Clacker. Yep. Um, mm. That's when uh, he finished equal top goal scorer in the league which I know he'll want me to wrap him for because I know he never finished equal top goal scorer in the league and probably under nines or something like that before that. So well done, Clacker. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's got a cult. He's still got a cult name here at the club. If you go down to Lillestrom, uh, ask anyone across one of the local bars about uh, Clacker, they all go, oh, yeah, that's our big, that's our big Aussie boy that uh, scored 17 goals in that season. So um, they had a finish, 
that 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 year uh, they finished second in the league, and that's still the best finish they've had um, oh, wow. up until today. So. Um, very successful season. So four and a half years there, the club's close to my heart as well. And um, then they sold me to Fredrikstad. I stayed there for two and a half years. That's kind of back close to where Moss was. They're, they're quite yeah. big rivalries, Moss and Fredrikstad. Mm. Um, so they sold me there. Um, I spent two and a half years there. We did really well. Um, we, yeah. we finished, well, we, we, we did really well. We finished second in the league the first or the second season I was there. I was there for half a season in 2007. And then 2008, we finished second in the league, and I was lucky enough to captain the team um, through that through that series, um, through that season. And then in 2009, unfortunately, we we end up plummeting, and uh, there was a the financial crisis and uh, a lot of bad communication yeah. from the football club, and um, you know, and the players need to put up their hands as well, and we we plummeted and end up getting relegated. So, but. Um, from there, I, I had a small loan spill uh, spell with uh, with Lynn. Um, where, where Gunnar Hollow was, that uh, used to be my assistant. So they were languishing right down the bottom of the league. And uh, yeah, pretty much the guy, who, the guy who sold me from Lillestrom to Fredrikstar, he came in to save Fredrikstar. And then I said, well, I don't really know if I'm going to stay here because you've already gotten rid of me once. So I don't really have that much faith in you myself. Yeah, so uh, there was a bit of talk. Um, in the so. It was it was better for me to sort of step away as well because I had my ideas of what I thought this coach was, and yep. um, I didn't have a really he didn't have a high standing in uh, in in my mindset. Um, so I said that will only get in the way of what they're trying to do here. So um, so yeah. I left, and um, and uh, from there I started getting in contact. Uh, 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 Branko uh, Cleaner, uh, Branko started to call me. And yep. um, talking about coming back to coming back to Oz and uh, Newcastle was uh, was a viable option. So um, yeah, that's, that's how that ball got rolling. So yeah, um, obviously there was in doing some digging. Obviously about your time overseas. Um, obviously there was a few papers or whatever in the crap in the in the shit heap that they go on with. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. When you when, when you ever go look up someone, they only have yeah. all the articles that you've been in the been in the yeah. stuff with, or yeah. or you you've told mm-hmm. someone off directly, and that. That's kind of a it's a, a bit of a cultural thing over here as well, and not just oh. cultural, but myself as well. I'm a very uh, yeah. a straight, a bit, bit, bit of a straight shooter, and um, I suppose that's the you know, thing. Yeah. Again, like obviously, that's yeah, what you want. You, you're not you're not stupid. Obviously, you've, well, you've left one club, yeah, gone to another yeah. club, and it did, cause didn't work out the first time when he yeah. was there. You, yeah. Don't take a genius going all. Oh, I, I, I I think once you once you young pups get a little bit older as well, you'll understand that. That you can be truthful and you can tell the truth, but sometimes you got to pick and choose when to say it. And uh, yeah, uh, and and there's other times when you think to yourself, "Well, I wish I would have said that." So I, you know, I, I don't have any regrets on anything that I've done yeah. and and what I've said because I know it was the truth. So if we tell our young kids that they should tell the truth, then I've never lied. I've always told the truth. It just yep. hurt people's feelings that I thought didn't do a good job and were shit at doing their job, and I just let them know that, you know what, you're shit at doing your job, so what the fuck yep. do you want me to do? Do you know what I mean? That's it, no, so, 100%. 100% but, agree. I totally agree. But, not the first I time understand that you, yeah, but uh, that doesn't always get you uh, pushed to the <laughs> next area and whatnot, so you've got to be careful of when and when not to say those kind of things. Yeah, so right. you learn over time, you learn over time. That's all right. You're more than welcome to say him on our dinky little podcast. You're just going to get out of here, I feel I feel the atmosphere in here, so I knew I was safe to uh, speak my mind a little bit. Oh yeah, as well, so yeah. good, good. Uh, start, yeah. start, start. What was that? What was that about? What was that about, Branko? Oh, uh, we had Branko on here a couple of weeks ago, and oh, yeah, same sort of thing, just real relaxed, and he just he was heaps reserved, and then he just yes lost his shit and yeah. <laughs> was slandering frigging past supporters and yeah call the supporter out live on the podcast yeah. for, for hawking at him for like years ago yeah, do it. me um, and josh are just sitting there just like oh geez um, the exit. um next yeah. question yeah <laughs> some <laughs> scars cut deep anyway oh, so. man. such a nice bloke and, and yeah. even honesty as yeah. well you know what i mean like yes before yeah. we get into I, um, yeah. your jets career he he personally came out and said because we sort of stated you know like have you had any dramas or run-ins or you know mm. difficult players and and he was yeah. very open he said like look he goes Casey women we always mm. had a bit of dramas but mm. at the end of the day he goes I always had a time for him you know what I mean like 
everyone yeah. has their moments and everyone has their dramas. But at the end of the day, um, I think he said your name and was the other one, Kaz Patapter, I think he said. Um, yeah, okay. He wish he had a bit more, you know, he done a bit more, Time. listened and, yeah. Yeah, you know, got to yeah. know you on a more personal level than what. Yeah, I think, I think that, but he I also think the said, relationship, yeah, go on, he ben. also said that he appreciated that honesty though, as well. Correct. More so yeah, from well, you guys than yeah. some of the other players. Yeah, I think that we never had we did, we actually never got the time in the end. You know, he was yeah. sort of rip, rip, the rub, rug was ripped under him before he really got a chance to really stamp anything in because you know he he was he he coached that uh, Sydney United team back in uh, 94, 95, 96, right. that area where we we where the strikers actually won that league and he doesn't like being reminded of that either. But <laughs> um, but he's always he's always had a really great standing within the uh, within football in, in in Australia altogether. And like I said, I've got nothing but respect for um, for, for Branko. And at that time, like I said, we didn't we didn't get the time to actually gel together. So we spent we spent the weeks and weeks and months and months having coffees together and different things and talking about football and whatnot. So he's got a football brain, a football philosophy, and he understands what he what he wants and what he's talking about. Um, yeah. It was just, like I said, that, that rug was ripped under him too quickly and we never got to sort of gel those things together before we, you know, before Gary came in and uh, Dutchy, Dutchy got there and then, and then things uh, went in a different direction as well. So, um, yeah. you know, it was unfortunate because at that time we had – we had the nucleus of a really good team um, with Franco. You know, of course, we had, you know, uh, we had Lubo there as well. We had Topper there. We had Jobs that was playing. We had Fran- uh, Jeffers that was playing. So we we had good moments. We had uh, we were on a bit of a run at one stage there as well. Um, I think that was the the two thousand was it eleven season. Um, I think we were going okay in that season and, and and things were happening, but we got injuries at the time and. Then- Things started to fall apart quite quickly, but um, yeah, just, that happens in that happens in football. But um, yeah, which is pretty much spitting what he said as well. He said, "You guys, everything was tracking perfectly, and then obviously yeah. injuries hit yeah. um, at the wrong time, and obviously that caused." And, and in a, and in an A League squad, when you've only got what is it, twenty three man squad, yeah. it's just yeah. one injury yeah. makes so much of a difference. Yeah, it can yeah. definitely, absolutely, definitely. obviously. I believe yeah. um, what was the Italian um, Marcelo. He went down. Yeah. And he was yeah. in a really good run of form at the back, or getting towards the yeah. back before the injury hit him. And again, yeah. it didn't help. Um, no, no. He like said the squad was definitely brilliant. You know, obviously, as you said, yeah. Francis Jeffers and uh, he had Thomas Slav in there as well, the other international. The first coming uh, of Topo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Taylor Re- young young oh, Taylor Riggs. Regan was just coming through. Uh, yeah. uh, Zakovitz, uh, Ruben was there. He was yeah. fiery, but you could depend Ali on him Abbas as well. You know, Ali Abbas was there. So there was enough if you look, put all the names together and take their best periods and put them all together, whether whatever club they're at, and go, play your best football here. You know, mm. you, you're looking at a really good football team. So we were just unable to, to gel it right together as quick as what, you know, fans obviously want. But mm. uh, at the same time, you get those injuries and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, Nathan comes in, Tinkler takes over, and then the, you know, the eyes start looking the other way, and other people start looking this way, and all of a sudden, the, the direction you're heading in is, uh, you know, it, it costs points and costs games. So. Actually, talking about youngsters in there, Ben, um, but a young Jeremy Brocky was there at the time. Ooh. Brocks was there. He's, He's just become good... a free agent. Has he? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's become a free agent, apparently. So I mean, just an absolute, you know, goal sneak, uh, Brocky, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, he's been doing it not there, but he he went across to South Africa as well, and he's won yeah. umpteen amount of trophies in South Africa, scoring yeah. goals as well. So, um, yep. you know, he's had a really great journey. Um, so, before we get on to the next season, obviously that season in general, what was it? What was it like? Obviously, we've spoken about the players. Obviously, you know, Michael Bridges for Christ's sake, you know. What, yes, of course, I've forgotten been... about Bridgie, our you know, Believe our star, know. really. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> absolute legend. Please. Yeah. Lead spectacular and so forth, but what, what was it like playing along the, even with the quality of blokes like that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, when you play along the sides of, uh, you know, Bridgie was there, and like when we got when Francis came as well, to just size yourself up against you know ex Premier League players as well was a great grounding for all those young players that we had coming through. Taylor Regan's, um, uh, what was the little one, the little winger. Keep forgetting him now. He plays in the local league, scores umpteen amount of goals every week. Uh, I'll get to it we- soon. Vigili. Gilly, that's it, Vigili, yeah. So those those young ones that were coming through as well were getting to getting to see these, you know, ex you know, not ex professionals but professionals 
what that, the environments they'd been in as well. So, you know, you had Heskey come in after that as well. But, you know, the nucleus of, of the local lads was really good too. You know, Joe Wilhouse from the area, you know, uh, ben, ben Kennedy from the area as well. So, you know, I felt at... I, I felt at I felt at times in Newey it was it was a little bit like when locals came through it was kind of like well if they're local they're not good enough and I really felt for the sort of the Newcastle boys where yeah. they were actually good enough or they were a little bit behind but they need a little bit of time to grow and if you actually invest in them a bit more you could have yeah. found a little bit more out of them as well I mean Vigili I don't know how many opportunities he got maybe maybe he got enough in the end didn't take the most yeah, of what he got I don't know. So even at a second chance recently too. Exactly. So that, that happens as well. And sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe later on the club learned from that and went, let's give him a more of a go where maybe when Laurie came in, uh, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, Billy, the kid got in there as well, that he knew that let's start pushing some of these new kids as well. So, um, you know, uh, but like I said, you know, we had a great little, uh, group at that time and everyone got along really well. And, um, we all wanted to, 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 uh, Mm to lift the trophy or, or to, to, to represent Newcastle in the right way. And um, I think we did on, a, on, on many occasions. And yeah. uh, we, ups, we up, upset some teams that, you know, didn't think that we would knock them over. I think we, I think we played Melbourne Hart at one stage with 10 men for, uh, I don't know how long it was, probably a good hour. Uh, yeah. I think we led, we led 1-0 and I think we scored 2-0. And then from there, we, we parked the bus for the next, you know, <laughs> the next 70 minutes or something. And they weren't happy about us parking the bus. And I said, well, this is what football is, lads. We just got to grind it out from here on in, and uh, as long as we get the result at the end of the day, then uh, our fans will be proud of us because uh, we we dug deep. Yeah, so. exactly right. Can you um, can you remember much about Zhang Shu? The, Not I mean, particularly, no. Yeah, that's no. good. That, that's good because that makes two of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that makes I'm three. Sitting there, going, sitting there going through the team what? list, and I'm going, "Where the hell's this black come from?" Number uh, one, I, uh, yeah. He was he was he was he there in the same season, two thousand nine, ten? Yeah, we had, yeah, Gr- yeah, Griffo yeah. was there too. I thought Griffo were, were number nine. Uh, Ryan, another name that Ryan. you know, Newcastle yeah, Ryan, boy. Yeah, that's Ryan uh, twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ryan was yeah. twenty three thereabouts. But yeah, I can't. I don't know what is a young Chinese international professional football player. Just... He might have come after my time. I can't remember a Chinese boy in the team at all. But... but he might have been a friend. He might have come out for. Run, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Some yeah. name into Wikipedia or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's Wikipedia, it. mate. He could have put his own name in there. I could exactly. There, I reckon. You, you boys could make a profile tomorrow. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just one more thing. I have to look after. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll finish on the season. Obviously, you finished seventh. Missed out on the finals. Um, Hashtag forever. Forever. Seven. Forever seventh for us for Newcastle. Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but um, did you feel that the, the, coming into the season? Obviously, you became you and Lubo, obviously vice captains. Bridgie was there as the captain. Did you feel coming in that you had a squad that were going to mix and challenge for the? Yeah, I think so. We, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure whether Adam Waterson came in the year after or he was there that season. I think he was there that season. Um, Adam Waterson, the mm. the. the, the the physical trainer and um, high performance guy, and and he he really started to work on our fitness and getting us stronger as well and better. So I, you know, I, we did the preseason. I I done my what do they call them uh, ligaments on one of my ankles at the end of that two thousand mm. uh, at the end of that season where we finished seventh. And um, yeah, came back you're still killing me. So I in the in the in the in the preseason, so I had to get surgery, and so I got back. At the start of the season, when you know fitness levels weren't even high enough, so that's when, uh, not far into it, Branko was let go, and uh, and Dutchy took in. But before that, Deansy I think had three or four games as well. Um, yeah. I think we won one, two, and lost one of them, or something like that. And um, so it was, it was, it, it, we were starting to 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 try to build again there, uh, even though we were a little bit behind. The, I was behind the eight ball when it came to when it came to fitness because. Uh, Older generate older players, not older generation, but older players. They need as much as pre seasons as what the young one do, if not more. So, um, you know, I was already behind the eight ball, and I've done that once before in the two thousand and nine season when we'd uh, when I've gone down 
with Frederick Star when the, when the club went down there. So yeah. I'd been rushed back from injury and all of a sudden things weren't right and it, mm-hmm. it, it takes time to get those fitness levels up. So, but uh, during that time uh, with, with the squad that we had, we had uh, Jason, uh, Jace came in as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, cleaner, he came in to the foe then as well. So Nathan had, had taken over, and um, um, you know, uh, you know, he he he'd invested a lot. I mean, you know, people are sometimes a little bit critical of what what he did and how he did it. And there's there's plenty of people that have their their their, their worries, their woes with uh, with Nathan. Um, yeah. Personally, myself, we got along well, and um, you know, he'd come into the dressing rooms when we were playing down in Sydney and shake everyone's hands and uh, always be at the game. I, I can remember he was driving one of these uh, race cars around in Melbourne at one stage and he had Newcastle Jets printed all over it and whatnot. So, you know, to me, you know, he, he mightn't have been a diehard football supporter. He's probably, a, I know he's a league boy and whatnot. And, um, but, you know, he, he showed that he had interest in it and showed that he was proud of the club. So, yeah. um, you know what I mean? Uh, for all the things that went wrong and uh, he, he, the, the idea was right. It was just the execution of the actual idea mm-hmm. that, that maybe uh, got away from the club at the time. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we've well, pretty much everyone. I think we've sort of spoken to in regards to obviously um, probably other than Branko. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Buddy, the Job and stuff like that. As you said, most of them are pretty well off. He goes, look, it was it was a good time. That was yeah. not the last. Um, no. no. And you enjoyed while it was every yeah. morning. Every morning down at the Crown Plaza breakfast buffets and. Yeah, I mean, you only got to look at the results at the end of the day. Results always tell the story of any yeah, of any league season. Do you know what I mean? So whether you finished here or there, it's always yeah. a result of what's happened up the top and how it trickles all down. So yeah. that came across with with our results, and it came across with the Knights' uh, results as well, unfortunately. And they had, you know, arguably the best coach in the in in the in the game's history in Wayne Bennett. So. When you, when you see things like that not being able to be produced, then you sort of understand that, okay, maybe there's something holistically wrong with what's happening throughout this club as well. So, um, you know, yeah. you've got, great, got good people there now. So, uh, you know, you've been in the final and uh, the club's, you know, you know, heading in the, in the right direction. I've heard good things about uh, Robinson as well. So, you know, yeah. um, I think the club can be optimistic about the future as well. Hey, Joshy, I know another yeah. bloke that drives a car. Okay, it might not be a fancy race car. Around Melbourne with jet stickers printed all over it. <laughs> <laughs> all my membership. Yeah, I, okay, it's a, it's a, it. it's a dad wagon, coming. but it's a dad wagon, but it, it's got all my membership stickers plastered across the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see all the AFL supporters down there walking past going, what? The Jets. What no, the best one is when you fly past. I drove past somebody yesterday on the way over and we're going to Western United membership sticker on the back of their car. Yeah. I just got looked at sideways. <laughs> Get back over the border, you fly. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, but that's pretty simple. Uh, though, with the amount of jet ski we've got and you know, Ben's got, yeah, you walk, you walk I've got heaps. And you just, <laughs> you just get eyeballs. It's like, you're really yeah. sorry. Seriously, like, <laughs> like we we make the joke we make Man. the joke all the time. I have enough jets kits to wear a different one every day for yeah. about a month oh, and yeah. a half without having yeah. to wash one. Yeah. Mate, you're the, and I bought you're, another you're, three you're, today. You know, you're the soil of you're the soil of the football <laughs> world. Without without people like you, football clubs wouldn't be alive. Yeah, yeah and, so. and my Birmingham City collection is just as extensive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we Shit need just. <laughs> We're just trying to compete with Matt Vandenberg. That's all it is, you know. He goes down to the Cereal <laughs> pest. Cereal He's a good man. lad. He's a good lad, Matty. He's a good lad. Yeah, he scores some, love Vandy. I've seen him score some score some screamers on the oh, post some funny. here and there. So, oh, yeah. yeah. On his site, yeah. I don't yeah, know whether it's him up. scoring them, but he definitely someone's scoring them, so definitely. Yeah, yeah they're not close enough <laughs> to pitch it and see if it's actually him. Or yeah. Not. Great one. No, he's good. He posted one the he's other day. One of the goalkeepers fell asleep or something, and he's just completely oh, like lobbed him from the yeah. halfway line. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. Um, before we go, into, we go into the next season. Obviously, with the Branco scenario and um, his son. Obviously, real short, real short. What's what was your take on the whole Jason leaving? You've seen so many different things about it. Millerby, uh, he came out and said. It was literally like a month, not even before him, mm. before he got axed. We're yeah, back in, we've got all the backing in the world. W- yeah, whatever he needs is here. Well, I think there's, you know, I think I, I, I think they, I think the club believed that his knee was okay, and um, and that can never be, you know, when you've had a bad knee, that can never be ticked off as a hundred percent. 
and maybe it was a, a mismanagement from the club as well, not doing enough due diligence to go, okay, is this knee going to be okay? So and you, take your, you take someone's word on it, then, you know, if, if you've got a bad knee and you're, you're about to get a contract for X amount of dollars, then, then Jason's not a, not a lad that would ever lie at all. And he probably felt confident in his knee, um, whereas the club maybe not done enough due diligence and thought to themselves, well, how much risk are we taking here to, to, to what's going to happen? And uh, then they clash together. So, yeah. you know, obviously higher up, Nathan and, and, and the, the people who make decisions there thought that they'd been, um, you know, there's some smoke and mirrors um, behind it and uh, looked into it a little bit too far. And then, you know, things went uh, went sour from there. So, um, you know, uh, that's that's what happens with, in these situations. So uh, communication wasn't good enough and uh, all of a sudden there's a, there's a problem. So um, that's exactly what happened. Yep. Well, we move obviously on to the 2010-11. Um, well, sorry, 11-12. 11-12 season. Mm. Phew, we didn't lose too many in, in no. that sort of off-season. Obviously, um, I think it was Mario left. Mario Simic. No, no, he came in. Um, yeah. Bridgie, Bridgie, that was all sorts. Bridgie retired. And yeah, he tried and come back again and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> got. Um, yeah, that, that's bizarre. the golf. The golf course was calling him. So, but yeah, <laughs> he, found that, he found out that the yeah, he's chasing the other white ball longer than he was chasing the last white ball. So he thought, oh, I'll come back again. <laughs> but um, yeah, so obviously a few came out. Uh, Tiago came in. Um, yes. From, like, yeah. Tuna Dusseldorf, yeah. I believe. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. What was what was he like? What was he like? Was he, he was just it was it was just a, like I said, honest. You know, honest down like a, you know Brazilian players. If you if you if you meet enough of them, if you see enough of them, I've seen plenty of them here in Europe and that they are family people. Do you know what I mean? So mm. he fitted in well into the culture in, in, in Australia, where sort of families are first, and uh, we look after each other, and and uh, you know we have a laugh here and there. So he'd lost mm. he definitely lost a yard of pace. Um, but you know, when you look at his CV, and you know, you see him coming off the bench for Barcelona, then you think, well, he knows what he's doing. So you know, that tip come through from uh, from Lubo, uh, I'm quite sure, because they were playing, I think, in Switzerland together at some stage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, you know, he he added something to us, but you know, I I think he didn't really, he wasn't able to connect with the fans as well because he was a bit more uh, ticky tack and a bit more. Um, uh, getting himself into binds when he'd come in making runs in the midfield with the ball and he'd give it away or make a make an ordinary pass and all of a sudden he got a little bit of a stigma of what's this guy doing he's he's not doing what everyone else does all the time which maybe was you know part of the part of the problem was was maybe the rest of us were doing something wrong and he was doing the right thing at the time so but you know you can't you, you couldn't fault his effort you couldn't fault um you know uh, his his uh, his passion about the game of football and whatnot so like i said mi- missing a yard of pace but needed maybe needed something around him with a you know um, a bit more tempo not saying that my friend yeah. uh, topper stanley doesn't have any speed at all either cuz you know once he gets the that motorhead and um, that bush running the uh, of hair then uh, he get, he can get a good speed up as well but um you know maybe it was missing just the dynamic of someone next to him as well that was Different whether it was in, it could have been in front of him as well. Who knows? So those things happen. Yeah. Well, obviously, um, no, no, another forever seventh, seventh again. Miss out. In the yes. Finals. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, like you know, like I said, that, those years we had Griffo there mm-hmm. and, and Brocky there, oh. so we had plenty of strike power and we had plenty of things that could be offered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Labby, Labby just was couldn't there connect that it all together. Well. Labby was there. He was a you know he was a great little player. Labby left and right foot. Uh, you know, again, passionate, run all day for you, run through a brick wall if you told him to. Um, mm. So, you know, um, we, we had the nucleus there. We just weren't, weren't able to put it all together on a consistent basis all the time, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Branko out, Gary in um, mm-hmm. again. Second stint. Um, yeah. Back. Um, obviously, you know, there's no – every Jets fan, I think, but knows the, the clash between you and him, obviously, off – on the field of yeah. ways of differences mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Was it really like that or? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I felt a little bit, no, like, try to be as, you know, straightforward as I can and not try to, because, you know, you, you guys have, you know, you've paid your $8 a, a month to get this information as well. So um, <laughs> members should get that. Um, a full member. Um, I, I, I think there was a, 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 pre, a pre-notion there that, you know, um, you're a certain age, so... Um, 
you're on your way out. So that's the way it's going to be. So it wasn't kind of like, well, what can he do? What, what, you know, to me, uh, being a football coach and, and being in the business now, um, being a coach for the last seven or eight years is it's not about preconceived notions. It's about how much can I, how much fuel, how much is left in that tank and what can I get out of it to get the most out of it? So to me, there's no such thing as a broken player. Uh, you know, uh, our, our, our mate uh, Zakovic could be a real fiery head and uh, could cause some problems from time to time as well. But if you harness him the right way, he's an absolute battering ram. You know what I mean? That would run for four players out on the field you know, uh, all day long for you. He'd play the day after the day after next and the day after that, no problem at all. So, you know, uh, that to me is what coaching is about. And I, I felt a little bit when, uh, when Dutchie came in, that was a, it was a little bit uh, a preconceived notions of he already knew some of the Newcastle boys. So there was a stamp on him, a stamp on Will House, a stamp on that one, a stamp on that one. Well, if you don't start with a clean sheet then and, and let everyone prove themselves in front of you, Okay, if they don't prove themselves, then fine. You can start to chop things around and, and ask yeah. for more or demand more. But I felt very, uh, very much it was already preconceived on who these people were. And yeah. I think the playing style was preconceived as well because, um, you know, there was a, a, a really good influence then from the FFA on uh, coaches and analysis and playing styles and whatnot. And it's, it's triggered a whole growth of great uh, coaches within the Australian game. But... I think you. I think a lot of coaches come out of those areas and they're, okay, this is the this is uh, what they taught me there. That's how I'm playing football. Instead of actually letting it sit in your mind and go, how do you want to play football? Instead of not how well that's this is how Johan Cruyff played football. So let's try that. And I'm like, well, yeah. do you yeah. do you have uh, do you have the budget of Barcelona Barcelona players because it might be a little bit difficult to play that at certain places. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I understand the philosophy of it and, and the way it should work and the playing style and, and, and how it can fit in. But you can't put, you know, you can't put a peg into a, you know, a round hole. And I think that's what was happening there where it was preconceived that this is the style we're going to play and this is how we're going to do it. And I go, well, yeah. under that style, we haven't really practiced it at all. And you, you need to do it not just when the season starts, but in the preseason. And, and we'd had a whole preseason and then the season started and it was like, okay, we're going to change it. We're going to do all this now. So, which I'm happy to do, no problem. But I can tell you by changing it that quickly, you're going to throw a season away. So happy to yeah. change it, no problem. Come in with a new philosophy, go for it. But the preconceived notions of who was in front of them and already judging on who they were. I mean, you know, I felt that, you know, Ben Kennedy was uh, not the goalkeeper. He was, you know, beforehand to what he was after because it was like, well, Ben Kennedy is just local, so he's probably not good enough. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's done he's done it for the last few years and he's he's been solid, but the boy needed some confidence and needed people to back him as well. But mm. when you when you you you've got a you've got a, a mindset or you feel as a player that I don't feel that supported here or I don't feel like they're right behind me, then all of a sudden you start to doubt yourself as well and all of a sudden mistakes start and Things start to tumble down. So um, he's got great experience, Dutchie, and uh, I got a lot. I still got a lot of respect for him. It, it doesn't matter yeah. how many times people say to me, like, "Oh, you didn't get along with him." And I said, "No, we just had a difference of opinion. That doesn't mean yeah. I don't like the guy." So you know, I just don't think that the way it worked then was the way the way it should have should have worked. Or I, I, yeah. I, I don't res- I don't disrespect him because of it. I just think that it was wrong, and it was proved wrong because the results end up proving themselves. Yeah. So. Correct. I hate to say that uh, maybe I was right, but uh, you know that's uh, that's football and it goes around. And yeah. you know, you I learned from it from a personal point of view on you know not being so you know scathing of the coach, even though he's standing in mm-hmm. front of me, or that you know I've said to a local the local press or something that this wasn't right. I don't think it was right. That you know it's not probably the right way to go around it. Mm-hmm. Go go about it because yeah. then it brings that it helps to bring disharmony amongst the team as well when they know one of the senior players doesn't get along with the manager as well, things tumble there and all of a sudden people are looking again in different directions and, yeah. the, you know, which way is the train going? So, but in the long run, and I've said this to some of my coaches that I've had in the past as well, I said, it's your job, my friend, to make sure the train heads in the right fucking direction. Not yeah. every footballer in the team. So exactly. when it heads in the wrong yeah. direction, look in the mirror at yourself. Don't keep looking at all the players. <laughs> Don't look at the owners. Don't look Absolutely. at this and the, at the other. Have a look at yourself because I guarantee yeah. that if it's going shit, then you're driving the shit train. So, you know, get the wheel and turn it in the direction you want. And uh, then uh, if, you, if you can convince them of the, of the right way, then boom, 
you're onto a winner. So absolutely, and I totally agree with that as a as a fan. Obviously, just watching the Jets over time from that period, just mm. watching players. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. you look at it from there. Joe Wilhouse, for example, use him as an example, captain of the club at the yeah. time, and was doing great things yeah. prior to yeah. that. And then yeah. I think it was 2013 was his final season, and he gave it away. In my yeah. opinion, like he, you know, he he, he, he did. He, he, he fell did. out of love with the game of football. You know what he, I mean? He, he, he it it became that. it became uh, football is is your work when you're when you're a football player. It's your job, but to do the job right, you need to have passion for it. You know what Correct. I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're putting you know caps on coke bottles or stickers on oranges, then you might not be that passionate. But it might pay the wage, and you might just sticking them on there but when you're a footballer if you don't have the passion and desire to do it then you're going to lose some percentage of what you're trying to do out there in the field and it's become a mundane and yeah you don't get the same you don't get the same quality as well and and jobs knew that and he was honest with it and yeah you know he he decided to step away you know that's it he said you know he goes you know could i could i still be playing yeah probably you know what i mean but Mm. he goes i just had a gutful i just had enough and yeah, I just was ready yeah. to move on. Yeah, mm, I yeah. believe, as I said, as a fan, I think that was sort of the. Well, I think him and Topper, him and Topper, have taken up fishing from time to time, but it's not oh, really oh, working yeah. either because I don't see many fish coming off the boat at all. They, they I think they go by the fish market down at. Uh, I can't remember where it is now, but yeah, they slip by there on the way back. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, sa- in saying that, though, I think BK is the only player that's ever left the Jets, gone directly to the coast, and we've let him yeah. go with. With the fans' blessing, wishes. We it, yeah. we it was that yeah. we we'd gotten to the point where we understood it was more the reason why he was leaving. He was good enough to mm. get first team football, and we don't begrudge him yeah. the chance to go and get that. Yeah, that football. Yeah. There Unfortunately, it had to be the coast. Sure, but sure. you know, yeah. again, he's got the passion. He he is more than deserving of the first team chance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, different coaches come in, and sometimes they've got. You know, they've got one or two, maybe even three or four players that they've worked with before and they really trust and they just want them in because they know that having that spine in the team will, 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 will work in the direction they want to work in. So, you know, that could have been the case where it comes to, you know, uh, Ernie and Mossy and stuff like that as well. So, mm. you know, these things, these things happen. And uh, like I said, you know, uh, you don't, you, the, 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 the problem that you have sometimes is that they're locals, they're born and bred. So they're the ones that you want to keep because they give you the, the identity to relate to you because you were born in Newcastle Hospital and he was born in Newcastle Hospital. So right. this is great. Right. That, that means that means I could have been where he is right now or you know, yeah. vice I versa. Think, Do you know what I mean? So I think um, for me, as I said, like, as you said, you know, you're from Newcastle and everything. Like for me, Ben Kanarowski is pure. Yeah. Nova Castrian. 100%. Um, I played. I played against him through school, through the old yeah. um, state leagues, and that back when we were yeah. like 14, 15. And yeah. watching him progress, and you just watch him now, and you can just see, you know, I mean, he's. Well, you, you and I are talking about it, Ben. Like, mm. it just looks like he's hanging on a thread. Um, yeah. I think the passion is either gone, or he's lost. Yeah. So he may, he may have lost it. Yeah. He, he may have lost that passion. I mean, you you put into. You put into fact his injury crises over the past few years yeah, as well. Yeah. That that yeah. that would hurt your passion and your mentality towards your okay. love of the game. It takes a toll. It takes a toll. You know when you when you're running around and you can start to feel already an injury that you've had before coming on because you already you start to calculate in your mind how mm. long it's going to be, all the sessions you've got to go through again. And once you've been doing that, and Benny's been he's not been just playing since he was. 20 or 21 in the, in the Jets team. No, he's been do. there since he was 17, 18. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that career is already really long and he's probably, what is he now, 30, 31 or something Maybe. like that? Is yeah. that? Yeah. So do you know what I mean? Uh, and, and he hasn't had a change of scenery. He's been there the whole time as well. Correct. So sometimes you need to have a change of scenery and then go, okay, I, I know what I love about that being at that club again and I, I know what I want from yeah. it again. So hopefully he doesn't change. Hopefully he stays there his whole career. And he oh, becomes, no, hopefully that's it. Hopefully, prime prime you know, example of that is Hoffy. Capped. Hey? Yeah. Prime example of that is Hoffy. Took a break from Newey, yeah. come down, play for the heart the and then come back. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, like I said, some, sometimes you need a little bit, you know, you need, need, need to not look somewhere else, but you need to understand what you're doing it for and what's the reasons for it. So mm. sometimes it can become mundane as well and you're, it's like any job, it's even jobs that you're passionate with. You need to keep that passion going somehow and you need to make sure that you know, 
you're ready to go again and again and again. So um, hopefully he'll be there for a long time to come still. Well, he's got plenty of years in him. But um, as I said, it's like anything else. Obviously, the whole even COVID scenario is it's been so much yeah. time sitting out of the game and just contemplating. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we tried to hit up. We were, we were trying to get Boogs on there for a bit and, you know, you know, personally, just come out and clearly stay there, mm. guys. I'm Don't just, talk about football at the moment. I'm just having a breather. Nah. I just want to reassess. Yeah. As I said, he's yeah. got his own business and everything mm. else. He's not getting younger, um, so he, no. he knows his time's coming to an end. The yeah, exactly. Have started to pro, you know, yeah, up on him yeah. and stuff like that. So he's got to be thinking, you know, yeah, it's getting close. And yeah, absolutely, sweet ass. I've got no dramas with that, and I'm. I thank him for his honesty, but obviously, just you know, mm. leave me be. Yeah, no, like but so you got to think if he's doing store. it. There's got to be mm. so many other pro players in the game in the A-League yeah. at the moment yeah. that are still yeah. going. I mean, sometimes it's a case of, you know, you, you look back down the ladder and you see kids coming through and they can help to inspire you to yeah. go, oh, shit, that's what I used to be and now he's trying to take my spot and oh. then you get the rivalries going like that as well. So there's plenty of ways to drive yourself forward as well. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, the Australian football scene will, will jump back on. We'll get, get this season out of the way with. Um, and then uh, we can start to build for the future as well. Nobody, well, nobody um, can whinge after this season that Australia has a really long preseason. No, exactly. Because we're not going to get one. <laughs> no. We're not going to get one. Hopefully, as I said, yeah, it brings back to the whole summer scenario. I think it needs to happen. Um, yeah. You know. Like, yeah, I think it, I think it will happen. I think I think you've got a good guy in there in James Johnson. I think that yeah. he, oh, he understands the game of football. He understands what. Uh, you know where 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 we should be going as well, and he's listening to people as well. So you know you've got people like Craig Moore in there, and I know Vadukes has been around a little bit earlier mm. talking things. You've got uh, uh, Brescia's working within the industry as well. Um, uh, what's the girl from Newey as well? I think she's around there oh, that used yeah. to play for the. Oh yeah, uh, just took Joey, it. Just took Joey over the Peters PFA as well. Yeah. yeah. Joey Peters is around there as well. So there's plenty of good voices and plenty of people. And that's the great thing about Australian football is that there's a lot of passionate people who want the game to move in the right forward. There's a lot of people that are up and yelling and screaming. They want this and that and the other to happen right away. But yeah. it has to happen in the right time because then we, we don't want cases where we had the North Queensland Fury and these kind of things happen where, you know, you start something and all of a sudden it slides away and you lose the trust of the people that you've actually put it in front of. So The last thing know, we want um, is another NSL. Exactly, you know what I mean? So the NSL, for all the good things, we, I think we've gotten greater things out of the, the A-League as well mm. when it comes to you know, the focus on the, you know, having them all in the big cities, the crowds, the, the, the big blue derbies and the, all these kind of things. So we've, we've, I think we've taken the A-League as far as this part of the A-League has gone, but now we need to revamp it again. We've gone, yeah. back, into, gone back into Asia, playing in there, qualifying for World Cups. The Socceroos are the absolute... You know, uh, and the Matildas, they're the shining light of our sport and the, they're the ones that are getting us. I mean, without going to all these World Cups, uh, winning the Asian Cup, being at those Asian Cups as well, how, how involved is the nation in football? Do you know what I mean? So mm. that's kept, you know, uh, kept the juices flowing as well throughout the clubs, yep. uh, even though we, we, we've not been able to produce as much as we have from when we did back maybe in those NSL days. But my argument there as well is that Sometimes there are generations of teams of, of players that come through. And if you look at any generation of World Cups through Germany, Italy, Holland, and that, you'll find there's generations of really good stuff and then stuff that wasn't as good. Probably still, probably still on the level that we are, but yeah. the generation that we had before with, with the Dukas, Skokos, uh, Mark Swartz, uh, uh, Maury, Maury, and these guys, uh, Tim Cahill, who dragged on and, and, and fought right until the very end for us. Um, you know, there, there may be once in a lifetime things that may not happen again uh, soon, but we, we hope they happen again soon. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, we... and, and class is not always a, a measuring stick either. I mean, look at England. You've got some of the best players Definitely. in the world playing in the England squad and they can't win. They just exactly. can't well, play together. You know, to take you know we talk about the golden generation i mean did mm. they win the asian cup no mm. did they win a world you know they made the second round of the uh, of the, of the world cup so but the guys that took up the banner as well afterwards with uh, with Yenanak leading the charge yeah. um you know they've served us unbelievably well you know what i mean oh, yeah. mm. taking yeah, us yeah. taking us to three more world cups we haven't even been to one since yeah. 74 so you moys you moys your lawn goes your all exactly, those sort of players, you know, we're, your leckies. We're, 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 yeah, we're spoiled, and uh, they've become, yeah, maybe a little bit more structured in what they do. But yep. you know, I'll, I'll watch them any day of the week. So I think they're oh, terrific. Oh, 100. 
Uh, and absolutely, yeah. yeah. I said you speak of yeah. um, you had Mac obviously ending his time, ending his career. Yeah. So yeah, absolute legend and yeah. I mean, I, yeah. you know, when you when you put together a soccer team, and it's hard to put it together because it's you know the soccer gener- soccer generations before this golden generation as well. There's plenty of Ray uh, Bartsy and uh, you know all these kind of mm-hmm. guys and whatnot. I've got guys in Ipswich in Queensland that they, you know they've got number one cap for being a soccer and whatnot. So. The, the, it's it's hard to put them in, but when you when I when I think about a top soccer routine, I can't leave Mila Yednak out of it. But I don't know mm. I don't know where to put him. But because you've got Ned Zalich and Paul Ocon and all these great yeah. midfielders, Brescianos Bresci- and yeah. Vince Gorellas and what's you know, Jason Clint, you know what I mean. But where do you put him? I don't know. But for mine, Mila Yednak has to be in that team somewhere because he's just complete yeah. leader and um, you know was was awesome to the way he yeah. led, led the country through all. No, it's easy. No, you put eight across the midfield, one in goal, and two up front. <laughs> yeah, That's how true. you do it. You put Dukes and Kuhl up front, you put Schwarzer in goal, this, and you just have eight midfielders. Oh. This is starting to sound like Matt <laughs> Vandekamp's the team that I watch on the weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> you get that, puts, get, what, get that puts, one in your Vandy. He puts 10 behind the ball, and Vandy stays up front just slashing them and cutting through them. <laughs> Good on you, lad. <laughs> um, yeah, see, 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 I wouldn't. I don't think I'd put. I don't think I'd put the Duke in the Australian squad. Yeah, you yeah. Find it hard? I just don't think I could. No, I, I don't know about that. His club, his club, great at club is level, unbelievable. Club yeah. career, you yeah. can't fault him. International yeah. but I think, career, I just don't know. I think you. I think people start to look at like stuff like, oh, how many goals did he score? But if you look right back through a lot of the Duke's game, he's kind of like the oh. guy that's always. Last to give the ball or second last to give the ball, so he's the yeah. guy holding it up, giving it to someone else that gives it to someone else to score. So he's yeah. doing the yeah. sort of the off the ball kind of work that you don't see as much, and you, and you only oh, realize yeah. the shot at the end where someone scores, and you go, That was a great goal. Yeah. And I'm like, Well, you know, yeah. I, I, almost, I a goal almost in the, in the way is a scored, false nine. Yeah, I scored a goal in the Olympics because of Viduka, you know what I mean? So mm. he was the one that did all the donkey work and put me and laid it on a platter for me. All I had mm. to do was close my eyes and hope. and you know, uh, it works. So you know, he's just one of those that he, he yeah. brings. He oh, brings totally. everything. He links everything together, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, Dukes. And uh, it's if like given the opportunity in front of goal, then uh, he will score too. So yeah. it's like you and me been obviously talking about Stevie UG. You know, yeah, the fact that we can sit there and watch Stevie UG <laughs> for the Jets and yeah, it looks because we well. because we can actually watch him. Everybody yeah. else forgets about him. Every, yeah, I think too. Every... I mean, you, you, you two are you know young pups as well. I, I grew up watching. I, I played against and grew up, grew up watching uh, Viduka when he was in, uh, in '94 at Melbourne Knights and stuff. And mm. he was honestly, he, his feet was as fast as anyone's. And you think, oh, you know, he, he always carried a bit of weight here and there. But back through that area, right up until sort of, you know, uh, he got further on where people started complaining about weight issues and these kind of yeah. things. He was absolutely dynamite. I mean, him yeah. and like Harry Kuehl, you couldn't even. You know, his speed off the mark was just ridiculous. He'd take two steps and you'd, you'd lose him already and he'd already yeah. be firing the ball off, you know what I mean? So yeah. that, that small foot kind of speed and stuff, that only sort of happens when you're coming up and through. By the time you sort of reach 30 and beyond, you don't really have that kind of small speed touches anymore. That's why, you know, you, what's his name? Uh, I was talking to, uh, what was the, the center for um, the Knights? McGregor? No, not McGregor. Uh, has the shakes, the shakes. Oh, Newcastle Knights. <laughs> yeah, Newcastle. No, oh, uh, yeah, the Knights. Um, the Knights. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You've lost me. I don't know. I don't really support them. Bald head, the bald headed one that played bloody well uh, centers for New South Wales. But anyway, I was you're, talking, ta- you're talking a foreign sport to me. You're talking yeah, back, not back, get, back, not, back. Yeah, you're not kids, but not kids, but McDougal, McDougal. Yes, Dougal. he has those drink shakes and whatnot yeah, that he shakes, sells. Yeah, yeah. Dudes. And I was talking to him about it. He said, my tests, what I do now, are exactly the same as what they were 10 years ago. But the thing is, is that when you're running in the game as well and those small foot spaces where you've got to be on your toes and bang, 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 they're yeah. never as quick as anymore. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And yeah. back watching Viduka and Kuehl, uh, yep. Skoko and these guys back in the day, they were just, they were phenomenal and they were so fast and their brains were so fast as well that they were yeah. always three or four steps ahead of you. So... Um, yeah, that's where you can lose a little bit with the Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, we talk about obviously the Dukes and the Golden Generation, and we had them on, like obviously on, on Optus Sports or whatever, not long ago, talking about um, 
Australian football compared to obviously European, obviously the Dukes over in mm. Croatia and mm. Grella yeah. in um, Italy, yeah. I think it is at the moment. Yeah. Um, places like that. What's it like over in um, Norway? What, what's it we're like? like a, we're, we're, like a, we're like at home. We're spoiled as hell. We have all the facilities we want and more. And yeah. uh, the government says, do you need any more? And the, club, the clubs go, yep, we'll take some more. So this is Norway is Scandinavia is they're the richest you know, they're the richest countries in the world, pretty much. Mm. So whatever you want, the government takes care of you. Do you know what I mean? So, so what's it like for the think, juniors, though, um, coming through? Do they, like, say, say here, for example, you know, you play yeah. in the local under-14s, MPL or whatever it is, you've got to fork yeah. out so much money as a parent to get these yeah. like, get your young kids in there. Yeah. And you don't get a lot out of it. You get, what, 14 games a season. The yeah. furthest you get the travels, maybe an hour. Yeah. where you look at overseas places like, the Dukes, I think, was saying, you know, oh, you know, we pay half the price and we travel yeah. to Europe for the weekend for tournaments and yeah. What's it I mean, obviously, it's a lot. It's a lot easier because here you can take the bus yeah. and you go from Croatia to you know um, across the border to yeah. wherever you want after that and get to Italy yeah. and whatnot. So you know, at home, it's just the, because we're such a massive country. That's where some of the problem lies within yeah. the old NSL because we couldn't fly everywhere all the time and it was yeah. costing too much all the time. So. Um, you know, there's 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 pluses and minuses. I think I think eventually the FA will will get a hold of these um, these uh, the amounts that are being paid and whatnot because uh, bang for your buck is the most thing is what you're looking for. Make sure that coach you got does have the right level of accreditation and he does know what he's talking about because I've just paid three thousand dollars for my son to be here or daughter to be here. So I want to make sure that they're looked after and and, and getting the right kind of coaching. Like, I think generally, um, generally, uh, the, everyone's heart's in the right place. They're trying to go. Right. The, the problem that you get with it is that when, or when that money of juniors goes to paying a senior player to play in the top team, mm. that's when things start to break up. So I think eventually the FFA will get a hold of all these kind of things. Each state needs to get a hold of these things yep. and make sure, make sure those budgets are kept separately. That's what they do over here really well that the junior budget is the junior budget and the senior budget is the senior budget. And if you get sponsors for that, that's for that. And if you get sponsors for that area, that's for that area. And the same, the women's league here is the same at uh, one of the clubs that are my old club, Lillestrom. The women's league, the women's team is separate from the men's team. So not all the money is thrown in together and swapped around. Everyone Mm -hmm. has their own hierarchy hierarchy, and they they look after after their own things. So, um, But yeah, we're, we're not missing anything over here. We are uh, the, the the problem we've had here that you we don't have out in Australia is that Norway hasn't they haven't qualified for anything since the year two thousand. So yeah, we've been in playoffs against Spain and Turkey to for for European Championships and World Cups, but we've not qualified since the year two thousand. So that's twenty years mm. out of massive tournaments, and that really hurts the culture of things. You know, of, of having those those uh, energy come back into the sport and whatnot here. You know, uh, skiing down a mountain, you can earn just as much wa- uh, more than what you can earn playing football. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, uh, Norway's a uh, country of five million, and they top the winter uh, the winter Olympics every time. So mm. they're mad crazy when it comes to winter sports and whatnot. But they are mad with their football as well. They're you know, the Liverpool supporters here are crazy. The Man United support here is crazy. Uh, Tottenham, they've had a, a few ex players, Eric uh, Tushvet and a few others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that have played there and whatnot. So um, Stefan Everson that played there as well. So there's a Tottenham base as well here. So um, they're mad football. If you walk around on the weekend, you pull past the uh, the apartment buildings, you can hear football coming out of them everywhere. So mm. yep. season's just started here. It's all kicked off. But yeah, the the juniors here uh, don't pay don't pay as much as what we do at home. Um, and um, that's uh, like I said, that needs to be uh, that needs to be fixed as well. Back at home, it's it's yeah. No. That's that's yeah, I mean. that's amazing. It, like Norway just need to be drawn in a qualifier against England because England do really shit against Scandinavian <laughs> sides. <laughs> well, they've got they, they boast their record over here against big teams. So I think the last time they played England, they beat them as well. Yep. and they've actually played they've actually played Brazil. I think five times over over their whole uh, existence of football, and I think they've beaten them four or five. I don't think Brazil's ever beaten them actually. So, so they've got a, a massive record against Brazil Take as well. Take it where you so. can get it. So, yeah, absolutely. yeah, boy, Summer Axel has come in and just said, is the language easy to learn? No, but uh, 
But how many, uh, how many years is it? Fourteen. You've been fourteen. There? So <laughs> yeah, I've had yeah, I've had länge nu, men jag är så flink nog att jag kunde snacka det. Så om du har någon nordman där, så hur hör du mig nu? Det var had a good han icke snappa så bra nosh. So all I said was I've been here a long time now. I should speak better Norwegian than I do. If you have any Norwegians watching right now, they will be definitely criticizing exactly what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but pronunciation, you know, pronunciation is key over here and uh you know, I I I, I tend to stumble on the words a lot. But you know, over here uh, Norway, Scandinavia, Denmark, you can speak English to anyone mm. pretty much. So there's the older generation, you know, you get stuck with. Um, but even them, they'll have a go at it just uh, just because they want to to try. You know, that was going to be so, my next question. How much how much English do you come across? Uh, everywhere. Yeah. If you if you come to if you come to Norway, you can go to any anywhere you walk into uh, any store or whatever. You can speak English. They can speak English to you. No problem at all. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, not so easy, mate. Well, we're going to slowly wrap it up. Ben, have you got that list there down the bottom? List that I sent through the best. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes, I do. Um, yeah. Wrong screen. We're just going to roll through that. Um, mm. Obviously, a few questions I've got before. Obviously, we started. No problem. Just to end it, nice and quick and sharp. Uh, best player you have played with and against? Best player I've played with? Um, oof. Oof, that's hard to, hard to say. And against best one, uh, the player I played against. You shared a moment with David Beckham, didn't you? Yeah, so he's probably the one that probably the best, as in name wise and football wise, that I've played against. I mean, I played against Giggsy as well um, when Man in the early late nineties mm-hmm. as well. So, um, you know, I, I'd probably put Giggsy just above just above Beckham. It's hard to it's hard to split them when it comes to. Not just a silly name recognition, recognition. They're just mm. great, great footballers. But Giggsy, you know, he stood the test of time as well. So, you know, I'd probably pick him over the best that I've played against. Um, but the best that I've played with, that's that's a difficult one. I, I played with, I, 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 you know, I didn't play with many big European names that came through. I only stayed in Norway most of the time. So, you know, it definitely have to be definitely have to be an Aussie. It either it. it it's very hard to split Harry and uh, Paduka. Um, it's hard to split those two. I'd have to, I'd have to draw the line down the middle of those two and say one of those for sure. Uh, so easy, mate. You got the next one there, Ben? Uh, yeah. The most memorable moment for you in Jets colours? In Jets colours, memorable moment. I, I, we played at North Queensland Fury, and uh, after the game, I got to see my uncles and aunties that never, never seen me play football before. Um, because I was always abroad or we played in Brisbane or I was in Perth or wherever. So I got to, they made banners and different things. And after the game, I went proud. I gave, I, I gave my jersey away to my cousin and uh, we sat in the grandstand and we had a coffee here after the game and enjoyed that. So brilliant. Uh, most memorable goal? <laughs> There's not many. Um, <laughs> I, don't even think I, I don't even think I scored for the Jets. No, no, I can't remember one. No, no, definitely didn't score in the A League. Um, I scored a nice one at Para uh, when Para Para made a Para in the league for for the glory. Um, most memorable. I, I I probably scored more goals here spot with uh, with Frederick Stud that were more important. So I scored a goal at uh, at Rosenborg, which is the the big team oh, over yes. here. Yes, uh, it's not never easy to beat Rosenborg. They just Pound teams for fun, and luckily we got them in a year, probably where they were building, and um, we won the game two one, and I scored the penalty. Uh, I can remember uh, one of the coaches that I used to play for before say that it was a bad penalty, and I can remember writing uh, or talking about it in an interview, and they said that, he said that it was a bad. Penalty. I said, "What the fuck's a bad penalty when it goes over the white line?" So <laughs> I didn't understand what he was yeah. talking about. So, so I put it right down the I put it right down the middle of the goal in front of you know. 20 or 25,000 people. So I said, I'll just, I'll just gamble on one here and I'll go straight down the middle. And he goes, that wasn't a good penalty. Well, if, if, said, if, it, if, it went through, if it went in the back of the net and it rustled the net, it went goes, over the yeah. line and there's 25,000 people yeah. cheering behind you, I'd, I'd say that's a, well, I'd say that's a, pe- I'll, I'll that's a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, I'll take it. I'd so, have been cacking I've always myself. said that. People always say, this, like, 
how do you take penalties and what's the, what's the key to taking penalties? And I've had people practice them. I said, you can't really practice taking penalties. You either have a technique and you believe in it and the key is only to get the ball over the white line. It doesn't matter if you preempt what you're doing or you make it, make it up as you go on. I used to make it up, take three or four steps into it and then I go, okay, we're making a decision from here. So it was more you know, wit than it was, uh, you know, instinct than it was preempted because preemption could, you could run up to the ball a certain way, then all of a sudden the goalkeeper goes, okay, this looks like it's going this way. So mm. I tended to uh, use a little bit of, um, you know, instinct on it and whatnot. And it worked me, it worked well for me anyway. It's funny you say that. I remember an interview oh, years ago when Liverpool, and when Fernando Torres scored a penalty and it mm. top pitch, like, yeah, you can't get much better than what it was. Yeah. And the bloke in the interview was saying, virtually saying, oh, you know, absolute scream a penalty. Um, yeah. Did you practice it? And yeah. all, I, all I remember is bloody Rafa coming behind him and yeah. just going, you realise you had that much goal? Yeah. And, and like a couple of inches higher and yeah. you would have missed it and yeah. looked like an absolute donkey. And then you walk <laughs> off. And <it> was like, <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah you, don't say, you don't say that to one of the you know most prolific goal scorers in Europe over the last twenty years. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Rafa, was, Rafa knows better. He, he was, was good though. He was like good. he, um, same thing. He, I think it was Torres again, x amount of goals or yeah. something like. Oh, for Liverpool, Rafa. he was brilliant, and then he went to yeah. Chelsea, and it's a, it's a coffin down there for strikers. So yeah, the only one that scored four, goals there was Drogba or something, and the rest are mm. all peanuts. Yeah. So yeah. case in point, Shevchenko. Oh. Shevchenko as well yes. Shevchenko yeah, yes, is prime course. example yes. exactly. bangs him in for fun so. at AC Milan moves across to Chelsea yeah. does squat nothing Chelsea's nothing Morata's <laughs> another one yeah, yeah. yeah. Torres scored four in, in a game or whatever and, and on the ball everyone signed it and Rafa signed it with um, yeah he scored four goals but made 18 mistakes or something like that <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah alright Rafa <laughs> yeah but you know he knows best yeah about. Um, yeah, who's exactly. um, um, who's the biggest pest at the Jets? The talk. biggest pest at the Jets while I was there. Ooh, I, th- I, I Bridgie liked to, not a pest, but Bridgie liked the uh, practical jokes. So he was, you know, constantly uh, playing tricks on people and whatnot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him a pest at all because he's, 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 uh, is he senior than me? Anyway, he might be a little bit senior than me, so. You can't call senior players pests at all, but um, he definitely liked that. He definitely liked the practical joke, did Bridgie? Um, I can't think of any of the younger ones that were pests. They were quite, uh, they were quite good kids back in the day, where they they didn't really bark up about anything and uh, and get into too much trouble at all. So I uh, said so there was only pests on the field, like where you got little little uh, sand gropers like Joe Wilhouse and then uh, Ruben Zakovic biting at your ankles and whatnot, trying to get the ball off you. Mm. So, but uh, yeah. I think we can throw Matt Vandenberg in that category too. He didn't finish year 12. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can throw Van in that category too. Yeah. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, best manager you've played under? Um, probably the best one. The two best managers I played under were, were Frank Farina and Uwe Rushler, who both came out of playing. Um, and took over as managers after the year they finished playing. So mm. they were quite close to what was going on. Yeah. They understood what the players were thinking um, and they tried to put things into motion where, you know, they had the players insight into it. So the ones that, that weren't as good were the ones that were detached from that for a long time or didn't put themselves in the players' shoes enough. And uh, we tended to, you know, they tended to coach out of a book instead of coaching on, the people that are that are standing in front of them, so uh, and their players. Yeah, ben. Uh, favorite team. Favorite team. Um, well, I'm a big Canterbury Bulldogs supporter. Uh, I like the dogs. Um, oh, I hear they're looking for. I hear they're looking for a coach. <laughs> they're <a> coach. <laughs> True. Um, but what sport I am, are they I from? Am a, I am. A, I, they're they're a league team. <laughs> um, What's a league? But I'm a. I'm I'm a, I'm a United supporter. I'm a Man United supporter. Ooh, so I wouldn't, Joshy, I'm that not one a, hurts. I'm not a I'm not an ecstatic one where I have to see every game uh, because I grew up in Northwest Queensland. So we're rugby league people. I love cricket. Um, so you know, uh, but I, I probably love cricket more of the era with uh, Warney mm. and uh, Shane War uh, with Warney and Steve War and uh, these kind of guys. So. Um, I'm sure those things will come back around again as well, and Australian cricket will clean up their act as well, like every other 
sport needs to at one stage. But yeah, I, I, I am. I, I, but I'm not one that sort of you know yells it out to the skies and has to gloat about the win or whatnot. So I was but, about yeah, to say, Joshy, that one hurts. <laughs> I bet you that one hurts, doesn't it, Josh? You're awful quiet not, over not there. Won, not, not, not when you've won more titles than mate. Mate, um, well, uh, like I said, I'm a, I, I, each week I can watch Liverpool and just go, brilliant, well done. Whereas over here, it's like, you know, they're, they're very um, very patriotic to their teams and whatnot. I'm not that patriotic. I'm more, I like the football, so I'm like, and, and this year, I, I, you know, to be fair, I've cheered on Liverpool in plenty of games going because... When you haven't won the league in that long, you think right. you know this is gonna this is gonna be this is gonna spice up the league for years to come. You know, City are gonna come back stronger. United are banging back on the door. You got Liverpool screeching ahead at the moment, so you know it's just gonna make for great TV next. You know, when the season starts again proper. What's a Premier League? <laughs> You'll get there one day, mate. You'll get back. No, there. we'll get back there one day. Oh, you had a glimpse. You've seen it and then left. Um, no, no, we, we won. We won the Carling Cup. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Against, nah. against Arsenal, these clubs. Are, these yeah, against clubs Arsenal. Always rebuild again. Yeah, these clubs always rebuild again. It's hard when the clubs like, for instance, like I think Hull. I think they've got relegated. Yep. I'm not too sure. No, oh, they're eight, close. Eight nil the other day. So yeah. that's that's when the that's when the signs become really distressing. So when you go down, you know, places like Norwich, they seem to go down but come back up straight again. Mm. Because they've got things in place already, but when mm. things really fall apart, then it, the whole bottoms yeah. can fall out. Hard, of hard places. So, another uh, one. Yeah, exactly. They're sitting so, uh, us at the moment. What happens to Leeds? I think next year. Hopefully, if they stay up, I, I couldn't. I can't see. Well, it. I don't see. No, I don't see why they wouldn't. Be. Uh, they they've just got that massive supporter base, and uh, this guy be also. He's just so respected. I mean, every coach mm. in Europe, you know, every 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 coaching course I go on talks about Bielsa. Bielsa. What he's done and how he does things and how he repeats things and this and that and the other. So I, I know that um, you know uh, we had some people last year with the club I worked with in Fredrikstad. They went across to watch his style of coaching and, that, mm. and they were saying as well that the players there they love to win the game on the weekend, but they think training is shit boring because they repeat things a lot over and over and over again. But you get results and you win football yeah. games, so that's the most important thing. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, what was it like playing in F three derby? Yeah, it was good. I, you know what? I, some of the derbies at home, but and they got a little bit like that here in Norway towards the end of my career as well. They were too over reft. Where mm. when it's a derby, the referee has to be able to let the spice, you know, mix in with the actual game. So they're, they're so focused on the fact that it's a derby that oh, people are going to be throwing themselves in. So I want to get on top of that early. But mm. then. All of a sudden, all this energy from the crowd comes, and they want to see a little bit of, you know, a little rough bit of tumble. action, a little bit of, you know, rough and tumble. And oh no, don't do that! You can't do that! Don't touch it! No, big talking twos, slowing the game down. Energy peels out of it. So, I think um, you know, referees, uh, not referees, but the actual association, the, the FA, should look at those kind of things and go, you know what? Those things need to be left alone a little bit more because that's what makes sure that. When we start to talk about the F3 derby, we can talk about the clash between this player and that player mm. and why this happened and why that happened. But you don't have those incidents because the fucking referee is always in the way, breaking everything up, yeah, right. solving problems with yellow cards instead of letting the lads solve it themselves. So, yep. uh, case, yeah. case, enjoy, case in point, Taylor Regan, FFA Cup against Mitch Austin. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to read the last one there, Ben? Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years. Oof. I don't know where I'm seeing myself in 10 days. 10 years. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully uh, I'll be still in the game. It's the only thing I know. It's the only thing. Well, I love plenty of things, but uh, it, it's my passion as well. And uh, hopefully um, I wouldn't mind being in a national setup, whether it's here in Norway or back home in Australia. Um, but definitely within coaching, you never know. Could be back there in the in the uh, the new revamped uh, A League where there's twenty five thousand, thirty thousand people coming each week, and we're packed out because of the fans. And um, or I could be here, but I, I I can't say exactly where I'll be. But I'll know I'll be within football. Bloody beautiful, bloody um. Yeah. Carl Carl Dodd Carl Dodd might have the Brisbane job, mate. You might be able to take the Guam Guam. Yeah, well, I speak to Dodzy. I speak to Dodzy all the time, so. 
he's um, yeah, we had him on the other he's got he's, another he's got all the credentials and whatnot. So um, hopefully um, the right, club yeah. looks in his direction as well. So we'll see. Soon to be, soon to be father and that. Hopefully, yeah, it'll be good. That's right. Him. Yes. So. Yeah. Dead right. Dead right. No, absolutely, so we'll mate. Um, well, we're going to wrap it there, mate. I think we're yep. we sweet for your time, mate. Muchly appreciated for jumping on. Um, no problem. As Jets fans, mate, we thank you for your time thank at the you. club. We thanks, thank you for your, you know, everything you put in and everything you gave to the club as well. Um, no, no problem at all. Like I said, the, you, 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 you play for clubs, but you get just as much out of it as well. When uh, I get to speak to two young gentlemen like yourself, and we get to talk about football, and like I said, uh, the Jets are a club that's you know like uh, the Brisbane Strikers were, like Perth Glory were. Jets are close to my heart, and um, I'm always watching for their results and seeing how they're going, and um, you know, um, always ready and ready to give my support wherever I need to. But, um, football keeps getting produced uh, in the Hunter, and uh, the next young, who knows, the next young Harry Kuehl could come out of there. You don't know. We just got to make sure that when he comes, that we grab him and uh, he becomes a Jet, and uh, and we keep him for as long as we can keep him until he sprouts wings and goes somewhere else. But uh, Enjoyed my time speaking with you and uh, you, you lads. And call me anytime, no problem at all. No dramas, yeah. mate. Hopefully, we um, hopefully you're back coaching again soon and um, enjoy Norway. No worries, enjoy. all right, boys. Catch us, see you, mate. See you later, see you, mate. Bye bye. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks oh, to I need Casey to for his fix now. Well, oh, you keep going, don't worry Thanks. about me. Oh, you, you, when you talk mumble and shit, you noise know, a crap out of me. Um, but yeah, no. Nah, hope everyone enjoyed it. Hope everyone, obviously, nice, chilled, relaxed. Um, it, it's what we sort of hope. It's what we hope for, obviously, with guys like that to come on and just be able to just relax and talk shit. Um, I don't know about freaking dog and the host about not finishing year twelve, but that's <laughs> um, that's that's a little bit rightio, but it was hilarious. Just because I didn't finish year 12. I, just I did. Oh, bugger that shit. Um, waste of time. But yeah, but no, honestly, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Much appreciated to the legend, Casey Weirman, for jumping on. And we wish him the best of luck, obviously, over in Norway with his future coaching endeavours. Um, who knows? Might see him in the A-League at some point. I'd be happy to see him in the A-League. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think his style and obviously his, you know, what he wants in the game and stuff like that is obviously what, what football needs and what the Australian football needs as well. But, um, but yeah, when you come back to Australia for coaching, oh, I missed that one. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Well, he, he answered it. Well, yeah, obviously he doesn't mind. He, he doesn't know, but he's open to the opportunity. At the end of the day, as a coach, they'll take anything. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things, um, would you, know. you like to uh, speak about that thing again? Oh, Yes. yes, 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 yes. Give me a sec because I haven't got the bloody... I haven't even been watching what's going on. But, um, yeah, anyway, other than that, we are going to slow. We are going to slowly wrap it up. Um, we do thank everyone for their time. We thank, obviously, Lockie and, obviously, his father for the sponsorship once again. Well Ta-da. done to Pete. Ta-da! <laughs> well done to Pete, obviously, on winning the glasses giveaway last week from Mako. Big shout-out to those guys. Uh, much appreciated. Oh, there he is there. Congratulations. There you go, mate. Look at that shit. That's a rip, eh? Chris, if you're watching, mate, blow that shit up and send it to him. you get quite embarrassed, I'm sure. It'll be on Facebook <laughs> tomorrow. Beautiful. Nah, but, um, yeah, big shout out to Lockie and so forth. We will have another, um, I think I think Lockie's in the pipes of obviously doing some sort of promotion with, obviously, Gabriel Mar Optometry, where um, if you mention Crossbar Capers, and so forth, or present a barcode, you'll get an extra 20% off. Um, or you'll, you'll get 20% off, whether that be you know glasses or obviously treatments or whatever. Please read the PDF. We'll, we'll post that up once we've got the exact info and mm. for how long the dates and times will be running for. Um, so thanks to those guys. Thanks to Ben once again for jumping on and doing what he does best. Always a pleasure. Hope everyone yeah, enjoyed yeah. the new headphones. I've got a comment in chat about it. Yeah, the, the devil himself. Yeah, the de- um, they look like devil horns. They are metal as well, but yeah. Um, These are the ones I won. There you go. But um, but yeah, big big thanks to Ben, obviously. Thanks to everyone else who's been in the chat. Um, 
Aiden, Luke, Lockie's been around making jokes about Gary Van Egmond. Um, Jeff's here. Jeff was and uh, Nui Jets Summer News Fan Arch. I am going good as well. I believe he's in there as well. So, oh, yeah, I am going good. But yeah, thanks to you guys, obviously, as always, for jumping in. It's muchly appreciated. Hey, dog, I leave back in two days, lads. How pumped are you? Not really, consider we can't really go to anything and can't do anything, but it'd be good to see it on TV. It'd be good yep. to. Watch a bit of local. I football. already have the TV set up in the studio again with the Chromecast. I have requisitioned my Chromecast back. <laughs> I have cleaned yeah, no, the couch. I got I got the two screens going. So I, not that I believe there's going to be dual games going at the same time. I think it's pretty much one game a day scenarios. Yeah. But I'm raring to go, obviously, um, which is going to be good. Pardon I me. have I have six in this one room, so I'm not short on screens. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, guys, as I said, good, good luck to obviously everybody um, in the A League at the moment. It's tough times for oh, yeah. everyone. As much yeah. as you know, I can sit here and say, "Freaking, I want the Jets to win," and freaking, good luck to our lads. As I said, good luck to everyone else. Obviously, with, with the amount of Res- respect to all the players that are running We've out seen on so those many fields. Players drop out, and so obviously Castro's another reason, one. Um, you know, obviously he's he's decided to drop out, but obviously blokes that have left the club and. He's Stuff like that. So obviously yeah, our, our game, our game's getting moved and um, stuff as well. Late notice. So, so look at the end of the day. Obviously, um, you know, good luck to everybody. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not really, as a Jets fan, I suppose we can sit here and go, if it happens and we make the finals, happy days. But we are honestly, you have to be thinking next season, and that's exactly what I'm in doing as a fan. Yeah, is thinking next season and making sure that we get the best preseason we can out of it. Class in these, if anything, at, as practice hit outs um, yeah. against good opposition because as you said Ben said there's not going to be much leeway between now and the off season um, with everything going on and restrictions you're not going to get much games in you're not going to be able to play too many games you can't go anywhere to play it's games. all it's also going to be a lot next season about fatigue and management management of Correct. fatigue and injuries yeah. and health and well-being of players yeah so at the end of the day as I said good luck to everybody um at the end of the day, friggin' made the best team win in this scenario. Yeah. What's left of it. Uh, Sydney are the benchmark, and at the end of the day, they really haven't lost much, so they still would be the benchmark. They haven't had to go anywhere. They've been they very lost. quiet in the media. They have been very quiet, and they've flown under the radar, which scares me a little bit. Yeah. Um, the fact that we actually have to play them to to get points, valuable points that we need, um, yeah. is worrying. But at the end of the day, friggin', it is what it is. We'll get through this shit. Um, if it all comes out on our end and we make finals and we do something of it, fantastic. If not, um, I'm keen and looking forward to next season, obviously, and seeing what Carl and Kenny and the boys can do, obviously, with a decent preseason now that they're here. Mm. And obviously, as well as seeing who's going to co- who's going to go and who's going to who's going to come in. That's the biggest one for me, especially with obviously Carl stating that everybody. Is on notice. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how whether you've just signed a three year deal or you've got two months running on your on your contract. Everyone's you playing to, for you something. Have to fight for your spot over the next month or so, and if you want to stay here and you want to be with the Jets, you bust your ass because it's no guarantee. So mm-hmm. keen for that. Anyway, guys, we are going to wrap it up there. Thanks to everyone. As I said before, thanks guys. Um, I'll be streaming at some point over the weekend you'll see it pop up on crossbar capers ben will be streaming over the week i'll be streaming tomorrow lads there we go what do we got the aiden lads tomorrow jim wes comes back next season to play do you think he will only do a one season deal 100 yes Yes. what it is probably be a lockdown before the season ends anyway well they're looking at putting victoria into stage four Yes, that could be in, in an, could be a hundred percent enforced by Monday. So that, that's if that's that happens, we don't go well. We got notified today at work. We won't be going. Yeah, we won't be if we hit stage four lockdown. Our work shuts down. Yeah, simple as that. That's pretty much what it is around Victoria. Um, Unless you're basically a supermarket, a chemist, or a warehouse that supplies said places, yeah. you don't go to work. You're in, you're in virtual trouble. So at the end of the day, we hope it doesn't get to that. We hope that everybody around Australia does as they're damn well told. Stay inside. Don't go anywhere if you don't have to. 
um, do the right thing and let's get all let's get through this. As I said, we all want to be able to go to football matches. We want to be able to go do things outside in general. As simple as freaking walking down the main street, which you mm-hmm. can't do now unless you're wearing a mask. And trust me, I'm not wearing a mask. I have to um, wear one all day at work. So stuff that, yeah. So at the end of the day, guys, do the right thing. Stay inside. Only go and 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 food. you and you lads over there in New South Wales. You've had your week and a half pointing the finger at us. It's our turn to point the finger at you. We'll see you real soon, lads. We'll see you real soon. (laughs) You all thought it was a laugh and a joke a week and a half ago pointing the finger at us. Guess what? The memes are all about to be turned around onto New South Wales. Yeah, you enjoy that. The Victorians will come out in force. They will. (laughs) They will. It's, a, it's going to be hilarious to watch the ship storm. Actually, I'm going to say it on stream. It's going to be an absolute clusterfuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big time. But well, I figured I could say the F word tonight. Casey said it enough. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, we'll roll on. We'll deal with it. At the end of the day, if we get locked down, expect to see our faces a lot more because there'll be fuck all to do. <laughs> so... Um, that's pretty much what it'll be. But yeah, anyway, we're going to leave it there. We're going to wrap it up. Big shout out. Big thanks to Casey for jumping on. It is much less appreciated. He's a fucking legend. Time. What time is it in there. Norway? Norway, about 11 a.m. Well, yeah, that was um, the funny thing. You messaged him about the interview and stuff, and he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this this time's good, whatever, whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah, that'll be about 11 a.m. for me. And we're like, yeah, how? What? You, he, I was it? He said I'll be just getting out of bed, out of bed about that time. So that's perfect. yeah. And and Josh was like, "Hang on, what? Where are you again?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh, I'm in Norway." And we're like, "Oh, fuck." I thought he'd come home. I knew he was coaching over there, but I thought yeah. he'd come home. I thought he'd yeah. But anyway, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, we got in there. We got some fun. Victoria. <laughs> yeah, we got in there real good. I and A on because of one fucking Victorian infection. The club's great job. Thanks for that. You're welcome. You know what it was? It was all the international flights that have been coming into Melbourne that got re-diverted into Sydney. That's why. So Enjoy. It is what it is. Enjoy. It is what it is. Um, at the end of the day, as we said, guys, stay safe. It's much appreciated. No. Do what you do and just enjoy the football, obviously, on the weekend. Oh, the only thing I didn't friggin' mention, which is what I was going to mention, fuck, you can was still mention obviously it. big shout-out to, obviously, um, Newcastle, uh, Newcastle Olympic, uh, Mid Coast, Gourmet Magic in the women's competition for the three winners there. Adamstown, Merriweather sealed out a nil all draw. Um, thanks oh, to the women's uh, results. Raleigh Dobson hitting the post. Thanks to Raleigh hitting the post. Much appreciated. Glad to see you knew where it was. Um, that helps big time. Yeah, and it's harder than scoring a goal. And obviously. Lamp and Jaffers in the men's obviously getting up over Lake Macquarie was a, which was a massive, massive effort. Valentine FC stuck where they friggin' should be and where they deserve to be, right down the shit heap, copping five goals by Broadmeadow Magic. Or four um, to Edgy over Maitland. Grand I watched that I watched replay. that game. Grand final replay reverse. I watched I watched um, that game. The Edgy Maitland game. Obviously Damien Zane has done the right things before he left because obviously they Get the ground running there and done an absolute stellar job on that. Um, Western workers got done 2 1 by Newcastle Olympic, no loss, no loss there. And obviously, the big one, the Buds over Charlestown. Happy freaking days off to off to the races, um, straight away. I'm more than happy with that. Can't get any better. So, um, yeah, other than that, big shout out to those guys. Well done, and um, move on to next week. In round two, which would be pretty good. I think we play unless they're locked down. <laughs> unless they're locked in. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna continue to make the joke. They point the <laughs> finger at us. It's our turn to do it back. So yeah, round two, obviously, Lambton Jaffers versus Western Newcastle Olympic versus Valentine. The Buds at home to Edgy, Maitland, Lake Macquarie, and Magic Charlestown Azuri. So be all over that shit. Hopefully, we can freaking get out with a draw against Edgy. Be stoked with that. Um, or a free and very soft loss. It'd be nice. One one nil loss I'd take. Be yeah, I'm going to go for a loss, mate. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. I think you might score. Maybe. 2-1, two, 3-1. One, one. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We hope so. What have we got? Jaffa's win, Jaffa's home game. Yeah. Yeah. If Ben Kennedy didn't save your ass, you wouldn't have freaking got... You wouldn't have freaking... 
you would have got beat. He saved a couple of crackers I watched. So, and then and then surprisingly, freaking the late Macquarie freaking goalkeeper who got beat ended up as freaking goalkeeper of the freaking um, team of the week. So I don't know who the yeah. hell's freaking doing team of the week for the NPL, but fair enough. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Yeah, late Macquarie get beat. He becomes team of the goalkeeper team of the week. Magic and so forth win five nil and shit. Oh, that reminds me too. Lads, you've probably all seen it. On the Newcastle Jet supporters page, guys, if you don't have your kits for this season, it's nearly over, jump onto Viva Global and go and buy them. There is a code on the Newcastle Jets supporters page. I think it's NJC50 on checkout at the Viva store. Um, 50% off. Have you actually have you purchased them yet? Or yep. Are you still... Okay. I yep. Say, I did them like... today on my lunch break. I was going to say, jump in on the postage. <laughs> oh, it was only like eight bucks or something on the postage. It wasn't yeah. much. That's right. But no, I finally caved, mate, after three seasons. I'm finally getting one of the black ones. Very good. Very good. Only because I wasn't going to miss your opportunity if you get them for like 50 bucks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway. We're going to leave it there. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on tonight. Again, thanks to Casey. We'll see you guys next week, obviously, with a bit of football. So that'll be good news. Um, Depending on what day we decide to do it, whether it be the Wednesday or Thursday, we should have played a game, most likely. Tuesday, I think we play. Yeah, we play Tuesday. Um, So, yeah. What have we got, Jeff Young? Later, guys. No worries, Luke. No worries, Jeff. No worries, Luke. See you, lads. We'll see you next week for another episode. No idea who or if we'll be able to get somebody on, but we will try as always, and we'll catch you guys then. And as always, we we hate hate Coast Scum. We'll catch you later, guys. You take it easy. See you.